Uh, Medieval Dynasty, a wonderful survival crafting game where you get to experience the slow grind of building up from being a beggar peasant who had better not offend that giant buffalo, hairy, cow, yak. Wait, what? What is that? Why? Wisent? Wisent? Hang on. How to pronounce W-I-S-E-N-T? Wisent. Wait, Wisent? How the... Where is the V sound coming from? You guys apparently weren't hooked on phonics as kids. Anyways, you go from being a penniless hobo who runs from bunnies to becoming a well-known noble who runs his own village. The key ingredient in this transformation is time. Crap loads of time. Unless, of course, you have the secret ingredient that utterly breaks the entire game in a single day. Money. But this video isn't me just saying, get rich, noob, because it's about how you get this money and what you do with it once you have it. That's why today we're jumping into a fresh start so I can show you how you can become the deity worshipped, adored, and feared by peasants and lords alike. Don't believe me? Well, get comfy on the couch and welcome to the hangout. Let's jump into this, shall we? So in order to pull off the most overpowered start in Medieval Dynasty, we're going to be playing a new game. And if you want to know what settings, you can do it on pretty much any settings. It's not going to make that big of a difference. I like to go with five days at least for my seasons. That's just kind of how I do my playthroughs, but you can do whatever you want there. That's not going to change anything. Also, I am going to play for the sake of the fact that I'm recording. I'm going to play with fast crafting. You certainly don't have to do that. The only difference this is going to make is that it's just going to take you a couple extra minutes to craft up everything one at a time rather than being able to craft a stack either way there is no need to mess with anything taxes build limits uh, unlimited hp carry weight none of that is necessary to pull this off you can do this without messing with the settings at all all righty well we have spawned into the world here and gotten the starting a new life to be fair, this is probably the same life that I was living yesterday. I just wasn't playing that in game. But anyway, we're going to start gathering sticks and stones. And for everybody who has played Medieval Dynasty, you probably know why. Sticks and stones, love. It's not just about gathering sticks and stones. It's what you do with everything from there. But I'll get to that in a second. But what we're going to do is we are going to be heading our way on over to Branica, Right up here. So it's going to be northwest of our starting location. And like I said, as we're heading there, we are picking up every stick and stone we can find and once you get overweighed you're going to be crafting a few things and I'll get to that in just a minute all right so as you can see in the bottom left as I have been gathering sticks and stones I very quickly became overweighed and that's gonna be a little bit of a problem because now we can't move basically at all it's kind of like when you have way too much pizza which yes guilty I do that all the time pizza is the best food you're never gonna convince me otherwise pizza is just amazing but anyway when you have like a whole pizza and a half by yourself and you feel like you are just really killing it at life today um, yeah that's basically how we're feeling right now we can't move hardly at all so when that happens we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna craft that's right, a butt ton of stone knives. If you've played Medieval Dynasty before, you probably know why, but again, this isn't just about how to make money, this is what to do with it. And as you can see, after crafting 13 knives, suddenly, we are nice and light again. I I'm as light as a feather. Now, I'm going to show you this area for a reason. This, if you're wondering, on the map, is right across the river from Gustovia. Reason I'm showing you this is because if you want to find a crapload of sticks and stones, this is a good area for you. In fact, around the water in general is going to be a great place to look. There is always easy to find sticks and stones around pretty much any water. In fact, a lot of times, even around the, the creeks, there's a lot of sticks and stones very easy to find. But this area in particular, very easy to just farm up a crapload of them. And that's right on our way to Branica because we're going to start cutting pretty harsh northwest here so it's uh win-win or as michael scott would say win-win-win win-win-win i don't know who the third party is in that situation but i'm sure it works anyway now if you want another little overpowered tip something else you can look at picking up on your way up to uh, well really anywhere when you find these little broadleaf plantains those are always going to be good to pick up because they are the easy way to never die in this game uh, I think they got nerfed a little bit, but they're still pretty powerful if you get a fat stack of them, so always good to pick those up. However, what you're going to see as an issue is that I am getting so many sticks and stones that, yep, there we go again, 
I am once again overweight. Whatever shall we do about this? This seems to be hindering our progress. It seems like we might need to take care of this. Front and center first is our carry weight problem. Well, this is how you take care of that problem. You see, it's going to be really annoying with how many things we have to pick up. If every few seconds we have to stop and craft and pick up more because we're getting absurdly overweight. Well, that's why you want to come over to L L Lubo My Myra. Lovely name. I just can't say it. Um, you're gonna want to talk to her, tell her to show you her wares. And as you can see, just by walking over here and picking up the stones and sticks that we saw along the way, we have 42 stone knives. That's really good. You know why? Because stone knives sell for 20 gold or whatever the heck the currency is in this world a piece, which is really good because that is 840 bucks. I'm going to just call it bucks because that's I'm an ignorant American and that's pretty much all I know. But here's what you want to do with that. She is going to have a large pouch and she is also going to have a simple large backpack. Those are the two things you want to buy. As you can see, that's 570, which we have that much money already. And the large pouch is 390, so we're going to just need to go over here and grab a few more sticks and stones so that we can grab that large pouch. So you're going to need probably about roughly 50 stone knives to pull this off. So once you have that, I'm going to just need to grab a couple rocks here. Because I'm just going to duct tape a few sticks and stones together, and that's what I pay for all my stuff with. That's right, if you weren't aware, the stone knives are the easiest way to become wealthy in this game, at least that I am aware of. All you have to do is get a few of them and just sell them in in bulk, because you can pay for everything by just burying the merchant in stone knives. They love them. They can't get enough of them. It's like, um, no, I make too many drug references. It's like uh, pizza. Let's go with pizza references. Yeah, it's like pizza. You just can't get enough of it. Alrighty, sell her a few more knives, and now we can afford the large pouch as well, which takes care of a lot of our problems. Why? Well, if you see right now, our carry capacity is 35 kilograms. I don't know exactly how much that is in pounds, but it's not very much. However, we now have a simple large backpack, and you can also equip a large pouch with that, which increased our carry weight by almost double. So now, when we're farming up knives and everything like that, it is a long time before we ever need to stop, making us much more efficient and making it much less annoying. So carry weight already solved. Halfway into our first day, let's see, what time is it? It is 1324, which in standard time would be 124, because, again... This is just not the clock I normally operate off. But anyway, it's 124, and we already have the large backpack and the large pouch to go with it. We're not done yet, though, because there's some other things we need to accomplish in this day, so I will show you that, too. Alrighty, so I spent a little time, farmed up a few more stone knives, and that brings us to the next point. See, the problem is, if you want to do this in one day before, we need to get all the way down to Hornica. Small problem. That's kind of an entire day's walk in and of itself. We started like over this area and walked over to here and it was already several hours in game. So getting all the way down to Hornica in day one is going to be a problem. Or is it? They just introduced a mechanic not too long ago, the Wagoner mechanic. And this is a little broken if you have a lot of money, which good news we do. Here's why. The time currently is 1624 in the day. We need to get all the way down to Hornica, which would take forever. We need a ride. That's 570 bucks, which is no problem for us. And let's go. Bada bing, bada boom. We are in Hornica, and the time is 1633 because I had a little bit of a monologue there. That's kind of stupid. Those aren't wagons, those are teleporters. Those are those are basically, you know, the Star Trek room where you walk in and it disassembles you in one place and reassembles you in the other place, which, man, the phil philosophical problems with that one. But anyway, ignoring that, that's basically what we just did. We stepped into a teleporter and it phase shifted, warped us over here. And this is why we came here. Where is the guy? I'm looking for Jan. Are you Jan? This is Jan. This is Jan, and Jan is going to make all of our dreams come true. So, a couple things that we want. We want a recurved bow, and we want some arrows to go with it. Small problem. We only have $166, and the recurved bow costs 480 What could possibly be the solution? Well, may I introduce you to the outside of Hornica, where there just so happens to be crap loads of sticks and stones, 
laying around everywhere. Like, it's just the, a really great place. If you want to farm sticks and stones, this little place will do just fine. And we want to do it relatively quickly because we don't want to be here forever. And just conveniently, they're they're just, it's candy. It's just like a parade came through. Man, that was my favorite time as a kid. Remember those parades where you'd go out there and the, you know, firefighters would blare their horns so loud that you wouldn't be able to hear for four weeks? And then they'd toss a bunch of candy and smack you in the face with it? That was the best. I was the bully. I was pushing kids over. I was like, no, that's my Tootsie Roll. You aren't touching my Tootsie Roll. Hang on, that... This is, this is, we do not want to get age-restricted. YouTube, I'm talking about candy. Chocolate, candy, Tootsie Rolls. Anyway, but yeah, I was the bully who was always pushing kids over so I could get the best pop. I mean, honestly, the Tootsie Pops are the best. Uh, I mean, the great Tootsie Pops aren't bad, but the cherry Tootsie Pops are the ones that kick butt. I'd push a kid in front of the fire truck for a Tootsie Pop. I mean, back in the day. I mean, back back before I was civilized and, you know, an adult and whatnot. I'm <laughs> certainly not talking about right now. Syphix, this makes me look like a terrible person. You're going to have to step in here. Save me. Help me. Spare me from myself. This is... This is going poorly. Anyway, so yeah, uh, just farm up here. Now, depending, again, on what settings you're using, day one, if you're not using the really fast craft, may not be possible for you. Um, he might go to sleep. The problem is, these dumb peasants, they like to sleep. And that's no different for Jan. He likes to go to bed. The nerve of some of those peasants, huh? Tell me about it. So you might not get in under the wire to be able to get the bow in day one, technically, but you'll be ready by the time morning rolls around to unload absolute buckets of knives on him and that will get you the bow that you want and all the iron arrows you will ever want as well but yeah just to show you it is indeed possible we go and find jan as you can see i've got 25 more stone knives to sell off Oh my, that gives us 600, oof, ooh, that's a little bit awkward actually, we have 666 uh, gold, that's uh, silver, I don't know, that's, so, that's not gold, that's something or other, but this being only 480 bucks, we can buy ourselves our first recurved bow, and we can even get some iron arrows to go along with it, a good nine iron arrows. Day one in this game, we not only got ourselves an inventory that is double capacity, which again, you can increase more with skills, but we can now carry 65 kilograms, which makes building and crafting and everything you do in this game so much easier. Not only that, but we also got a recurved bow, and we got iron arrows to go with it, which means we're basically a combat god. We are Legolas running around Medieval Dynasty now. And all of that before the sun sets on day one. And in case you're wondering why I highlight this, if you've never played the game before, these are things that are supposed to take you seasons of planting crops and crafting and leveling up and unlocking recipes and all that like you're not even supposed to have access to this stuff for a long time 400 gold is supposed to be like absurd to you at this point in the game but in another way if you wanted to look at it it's just setting you up for more success if you want to have a more leisurely run at it even with harder settings this is how you start. And hunting becomes a lot easier. In fact, let me show you what I mean. So normally when you're hunting in this game, you start off with spears. And that makes deer basically impossible to hunt because you have to hit them about 400,000 times with a spear in order to kill them. But with a recurve bow, suddenly hunting becomes a little bit easier because you can one shot them in the face with your bow and arrows. And now all of a sudden, I don't have a knife. Well, that's ironic. Uh, let me take care of that a second. But now all of a sudden, instead of having to hunt bunnies for your first season, day one, we're one-shotting deer. That is a little bit overpowered. And by the way, I just wanted to put this in perspective for you because this is just kind of funny. My character still hasn't even eaten any food yet uh, because we're still, we're just now entering the evening for day one. I haven't even eaten food at all, and we have the large backpack, large pouch, every curved bow, and iron arrows. This is, <laughs> this is not the order that's supposed to happen, and let's just put it that way. Now that Jan has decided to get his lazy butt out of bed, we are going to ask him to show his wares once more. And as you can see, I have 108 knives, actually 109. So we're going to sell that, and now we have over $2,000. That's really good, and here's why I recommend doing this before you move on to everything that's next. Because he actually starts with three recurved bows, and now we can have all of them. And not only that, but he also starts with a lot of iron arrows, and we can have almost all of those too. And the reason that's good is it basically means we don't have to worry about bow and arrow for a long time. 
We have absurd amounts of durability on just one of them, but we have three of them. So, that means we're pretty much just not going to have to worry about making a new bow or crafting new arrows for seasons upon seasons and years upon years in this game. In other words, you are set up very strong. Now, that was day one. That's the way to have yourself set up nice and pretty just from day one. However, there's a few more things you can do to make this a very powerful start, and I'm going to show you those before we wrap this all up. Now, you may remember that I said you're going to want to have a very large stack of broadleaf plantains on you, and I just want to demonstrate why. First of all, they are 0.82 weight for 82 of them, so they're 0.01 weight per so they're virtually weightless but what might happen in this game as you might find yourself the misfortune of being in this situation where you are being gnawed on by a particularly hungry wolf this will be kind of a problem this guy is not hello uh, <laughs> um okay Alright, so you might have the misfortune of being gnawed on by a particularly hungry wolf. That's gonna hurt quite a bit. As you can see, he's taking out about 20% of our health per shot here. That's kind of uncool. However, to save yourself from a circumstance like this, all you need to do is just ask the wolf to give you a second, which is uh, hit the tab, go into your inventory, and broadleaf plantains heal you 2 health per. And if you have a fat stack of 82, that means that suddenly I no longer have 40 health, I am back to full health, giving me time to prepare another arrow with which to shoot my, my uh, canine foe directly in the face. So, as long as you have a good fat stack of 50 or more, you're pretty much not going to die to anything, as long as you learn to pause and ask the animals to give you a second while you eat about 4,000 leaves. That's about all you have to do. Now, I'm on my way to show you where I would recommend setting up camp and where you should build your first town. Now, that's kind of a personal preference, and we'll get there in a minute, but one thing you may want to start doing now that we are more powerful than any deity that they worship in these areas. Thor himself probably is a little bit scared. What you want to start doing, if you want to go into farming, is I would recommend picking a lot of berries. Now, I know what you're saying. Havoc, those berries aren't ripe. They are worthless to you. Well, that's where you're right and also very wrong. You see, you are correct. If we go to our inventory, these berries are not going to do us crap right now. They are plus 5 food, plus 20% poisoning. In other words, they will kill you dead in like 4 seconds if you eat more than one of them. So, that's a problem. But, we're not getting these for food. You see, there's plenty of berries around in the summertime, when they're ripe, that you can gather for food and for hydration if you want. But we want to get a fat stack of them right now, in order to start working our way towards fertilizer. You see, what's going to happen is, as time passes, these berries are going to degrade in condition, and when they degrade all the way, they are going to become rot. And rot is very important. It is a key ingredient in fertilizer, which you need to plant crops. Now, this is where I recommend you set up your village. And, if you're wondering on the map, that's right, we are right next to Branica again. Now, why do I say that? Well, right next to Branica, there is a mine. And this is something that is one of the more limited resources on the map. A mine is where you're going to find things like copper, you're going to find tin, you're going to find salt, you're going to find iron, all of those sort of things in the mine. And those are almost exclusively to the mines, if not exclusively to the mines. Now, there's a few mines around the map, but I picked this one specifically because it is right next to Branica. Why does that matter? Well, if I suggest that you start building up next to Branica, the main argument is going to be, well, hang on a second, Havoc. What if one year, my quests are in Hornica, Jezerica, Lesnica. They're all in the areas that are on the other side of the map. I have to get those done before the end of the season, and if I'm on default settings, I have three days to do that, which means I have to sprint down there and potentially risk not completing the quests. Well, you see, they introduced this one little mechanic that we mentioned earlier. And with our knives, it is a completely broken mechanic as far as this goes, and in fact is the reason I suggest building next to here rather than a more centrally located area. 
we have the Wagoners. And these guys just go giddy. You throw a few stone knives at them, and it's like their birthday. It's Christmas, their birthday, Hanukkah. It's all of them. They're just going nuts with a party when you throw knives at these guys. Because as long as I have a few knives, I can go anywhere I want on this map. And the way to get there is about 30 feet away from my village. So I have a village that has a mine right in it. I've got a good amount of resources. There's a fair amount of trees. There's a big forest right there with a lot of berries and animals and things of that nature. There's plenty of open land here. Um, fairly flat. It's not perfectly flat, but flat enough for you to build on. So it's, I think, a very, very opportune spot to build. Now, do you have to do it? No, of course not. This is just where I recommend, just because, again, you have a mine right there, which is... A hard thing to find with access to the entire world so nearby. So that said, day one, we had the large pouch and we had the large backpack, which nearly doubled our carry weight. And day one, we also had a recurved bow. Not one, but actually three recurved bows. We also got the strongest arrows. That would be iron arrows. And we have a fat stack of them, which means we are set for life, basically, when it comes to hunting. All of that before we had to eat a meal. Not only that, but we basically are an immortal god because we have a fat stack of broadleaf plantains. Which, by the way, if you want to know, there's also a way to get survival sense. You can unlock that as one of your skills. Which means you can then highlight with your survival sense how to find more broadleaf plantains. Because they'll show up like that pretty easily. That'll also highlight things like sticks and stones for you. And make it a little bit easier to farm up knives if you'd like. And so as long as you know how to say, excuse me, Mr. Wolf, may I have my leg back for a moment? If you would stop gnawing on it, I would appreciate it. I would like to put about 4,000 leaves on it to stop the bleeding, and then I will shoot you in the face. He will acquiesce to this request as he is a gentleman of a wolf, and he will allow you to win the encounter as you have done so fair and square. Not only that, but we're also setting ourselves up for long-term farming because we have a lot of rot coming with how many berries we've picked. I suggest finding a chest and throwing them in. You can have 900, 1,000 berries in a season, and that'll set you up with a lot of rot going into the next season so that you can craft fertilizer. In other words, this is the most broken, overpowered start you could possibly have in Medieval Dynasty. Now, where you go from here is completely up to you because the game, frankly, is at the mercy of your every whim from here on out. You can't be killed by anything. You can do everything you want. You can carry all of the things. You can buy all of the things. You can do whatever you feel like. That said, did I leave anything out? I'd be really interested in hearing your comments down below or in the Hangout Discord server, which is in the description below. While you're down there, don't forget to double tap the like and subscribe buttons. Now, in all seriousness, I love Medieval Dynasty. It's a fun game with a very passionate following. But here's a question. Have you ever heard of it? If you play it, you'll likely find the world to be a wonderful place to lose absurd amounts of time in. Now, speaking of fantastic worlds, if you want to see what I think is the best world in gaming, you should definitely click this video here to see me get the crap kicked out of me by super mutants whilst I tell you why Fallout 4's world reigns supreme. That being said, thank you for watching, everybody. I'll catch you for the next hangout. Have a great day, and goodbye.